Are there really only six type of liquors? What's fermentation and distillation? Stay tuned, I'm going to break it all down for you, nice and easy to understand, and I'm going to show you some examples of all six of the liquors that they make. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody, to The Art of Doing. We seek to inspire you to practice doing new and different things, discover new passions, and explore new curiosities with follow-along videos, how-tos, and explainers just like this one. If you're new to the channel, I'd love for you to subscribe. Smash that subscribe button and stick around to see what type of new content we come up with for you next. Today we're going to be talking about liquors and a brief explanation of fermentation and distillation. Really easy, just quick breakdown for you. And the liquors that the liquors, excuse me, that we go over. I did a video on liqueurs recently. I'll link to that up above, whichever side. Um, the liquors that we're going to go over. I'm going to bust out a couple of examples of each. I'm going to bring you a very common, very noticeable, recognizable brand, and then maybe um, not quite obscure, but a, a lesser known something that. Um, might inspire you to get into something new. So without any further ado, stay tuned, stick around to the end. I'm going to show you my favorite, prettiest bottle that I have in my collection. So before I bust out the bottles, let's start with a quick explanation of fermentation and distillation, just so this all makes more sense, or in case you have any questions on it. So fermentation is basically the breakdown by yeast of uh, a food source that contains sugars and the byproduct of this breakdown is alcohol. So you get a mash together, some water, um, something containing sugars, and we'll go over all the, um, the base for all of the liquors and some yeast. You let it sit in a, um, in a cool, dark place and you let that yeast go to work breaking down those sugars and they give off alcohol which is great, but you've got a big mess of gross, half broken down sugar, alcohol, fuzz, and water. And now you have to turn it into a beautiful, delicious spirit or liquor. So you go through the distillation process, which is basically you bring this mash to a boil and you control that temperature. Alcohol will boil off quicker, it'll start to boil and make steam, alcohol steam, before water will. So you bring this to a boil, the alcohol evaporates off and the water stays down in the mash and as it floats up it collects and condenses and then trickles down into another pot or container. So that's a very quick easy breakdown of fermentation and distillation. So let's get into some boozes. I'm going to start with whiskey first. It's the first of the six that we'll go over, really the only six that there are. And two reasons I'm going to start with whiskey. One, it's the widest array, the most different types um, of any of the group of six. And the second reason I'm going to start with whiskey will be evident very shortly. So let's start with a very well-known whiskey. Now, all these types that I'm going to go over, I will make a separate video breaking down each specific type of liquor. I'll make a great whiskey video that I'll probably break down into two groups because there are so many type of whiskeys. This is a Tennessee mash bourbon, um, Jack Daniels. You probably recognize this one. Very popular, very, um, very recognizable. And another type of bourbon, which is an American whiskey, is Basil Hayden. This one is also well known, very accessible, but maybe a different type for you to start exploring your palate with for um, whiskeys, in, the, in this case, bourbons. Another type that um, is a very large and easy to break down group is scotches. This is Glen Morangi, um, a very um, noticeable, recognizable brand. Um, I won't say a beginner brand, but something that a lot of the bars will carry and a lot of your liquor stores will have on hand. Um, this is a single malt scotch whiskey. And again, when I go through the uh, scotch or whiskey video, I'll break down 
a lot, what a lot of these terms are, bourbons and Kentucky and uh, Tennessee, excuse me, Tennessee, um, single malts versus um, blends. This is a blended scotch by Johnny Walker, green label. And oh, what do we have here? Just happen to have a rocks glass with a quarter of a ice cube in it. Weird. So, um, whiskey is made from a fermentation of grains. Um, and because there's so many different types, um, again, I'll, I'll break down how they all are classified and what each one means. But just know that they are a grain and there's a huge variety of whiskeys. Ah, and green label. That's loud. Green label is delicious. Let's go to the next one, which is rum. This is a Captain Morgan spiced rum. Again, to be found everywhere. All bars, most liquor stores. You'll find this readily available. And a slightly more obscure one is Gosling's Dark Seal, Black Seal, Black Seal, another delicious, um, you can tell it's much darker obviously, and we can get into in the rum series why there's different types like that. Rum is made from molasses or sugar cane, um, it can be aged. I'll give you a little bit of a breakdown. Um, silver rums are not aged, and usually the longer you age a rum, the darker you'll get. Is this just an excuse for me to drink Green Label? Yes, it is. Okay, let's go to brandies. This is Cavassier. It's a cognac, which is a type of brandy. Again, the readily available type. And this is Pierre Fernand, um, a, another type of cognac, which is a type of brandy. Brandy is distilled from fruit. Um, cognac is a specific type of brandy from the cognac region of France. And the fruit made for cognac is grapes. But for any type of brandy, you could have pear brandy or apple brandy, cherry brandy, um, and of course, a grape type brandy. Um, this is also aged. And again, I'll have another breakdown for brandies for you. Okay, let's see. Vodkas. I had a little trouble picking the types of vodkas that I was going to bring out, and I'll explain why. This is an absolute product, it's absolute Boston, my hometown. Um, it's a flavored vodka. And this is Reka, a um, volcano, fil volcano ash filtered vodka out of Iceland. Quite right, Iceland. Um, so vodka is distilled from, again, grains. So good. Um, but it's a neutral spirit. It doesn't carry flavors with it, or it shouldn't. A good vodka will be very clean and very neutral. The point of a vodka is to not carry a flavor, not have subtleties. It's not aged like the other three that we've already talked about are. Um, it is really supposed to be a clear, clean, non-alcoholic smelling, um, neutral spirit that you add for a lot of different mixers. And recently they've been coming out with a lot of different flavored vodkas. This is why I had trouble deciding what to bring out of the collection. I really don't have a lot of vodkas because a good vodka shouldn't taste like much. So I have a clean, clear vodka. And although I'm not into flavored vodkas, I really do enjoy this Absolute Boston. Um, vodka can be made out of potatoes, but it's not, it doesn't have to be made out of potatoes. It really can be made out of almost any grain. So let's move on to the other non-aged liquor. This is number five in our group. This is Tangeray. This is a London dry gin. And this is Hendrix 
new style of gin. Let me move some of these over. Um, this might be something that you might consider if every time you try a gin drink, you think it tastes like pine cones or Christmas trees. Um, the London Dry is very heavy on juniper. Um, Hendrix and a few of the other ones are still very botanical, but not as Christmas tree tasting. Um, so gin is another clear liquor. It is, again, made from grains and not aged. However, this is bottled and flavored with botanicals, oils, but very classically a juniper flavor. Uh, Hendrix does have some juniper, juniper flavors, but it's not quite as front heavy as the standard um, gin that you've probably, if you hate gin, the standard gin that you've tried and hated. I understand you, um, but try some of the new gins. Maybe ask your bartender what's something that's not quite as uh, juniper forward or something that's not a London dry gin, and you might be pleasantly surprised. Excuse me. So, the sixth type of liquor, and I'll do this in a, uh, a slow reveal because I've got my prettiest bottle in my collection. But before we go, if any of this has given you any value, please give me a like, pass this information on to your friends, anybody that you think could gain some value from this channel. I love to get this content out to as many people as possible. And let's go to tequila. This is an 1800. Uh, lots of commercials for 1800 nowadays. Um, a very popular, accessible, most stores will have it. This is a reposada. And again, when I do the tequila video, I'll break down what all these terms mean so that you'll feel more comfortable ordering and understanding. And this is the prettiest bottle I have, I think, in my opinion. This is a Milagro um, Añejo. It's a beautiful sipper. I drink this neat, um, straight up, no ice, no mixer. I wouldn't dare mix this with something. Um, and I use this for margaritas and mixers. Um, tequila is fermented agave, which is a plant that grows in Mexico. Um, to be tequila, and I'll break this down again. Sorry for repeating all of that. But to be tequila, it's got to, got to be distilled in Mexico. Um, yeah, made out of agave well-known. A lot of people will start off having bad feelings with tequila because they did disgusting cheap tequila tequila shots. I can tell you that nothing can be smoother than a great tequila, so don't let it, don't let it steer you away. Um, these are the six liquors. My question for you is, and leave your comments down in the comment section below, what if any of these are a new something that you would like to try out or a new brand that I showed you that you would like to try out? And what types of questions will you have when I make the series of each type of liquor? Um, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Like I said, please like and share this with your friends. Thanks for watching. Let's always remember to practice responsible drinking. Let's practice kindness, compassion, and humility. And thank you for being here with me today, helping me to practice the art of doing it. to subscribe up there. Some good videos to watch over here. Thanks everybody.